a very good afternoon uh, to one and all present in this virtual uh, session i once again welcome all the participants to this uh, virtual workshop on essential skills for professionals must to best must to be best in continuation today we are going to have talk on do we really need to update our cataloging skills and on this occasion we have with us a very famous and uh, distinguished speaker my guru professor ns hari narayan sir from university of mysore i request all the participants to please join me to welcome sir to this virtual workshop sir we all welcome you to this virtual workshop and we are really eagerly waiting uh, to listen to you and uh, update our knowledge but before that i would like to give brief introduction about the topic and also about the sir and then we will proceed the uh, for the rest of the session we all know that cataloging is one of the important aspect part of the housekeeping operation in library we can say that whatever we do it is reflected with the help of cataloging and due to the advent of technology we have moved from traditional catalog to modern catalog in this situation we it is compulsory for all the library professionals to update our cataloging skill unless or until we are not aware that what are the points we need to update or we need to insert while cataloging it is not going to reach the end users and somehow the users will not find the exact information what they are looking for so for that the sir will be throwing lights upon different points that how and what are the skills what are the points we need to think and we need to know about cataloging i would also like to give brief detail about sir we all know dr ns hari narayana sir is working in different capacities he is working as a professor in department of library and information science university of mysore in addition to in addition to this he is also holding the current position of director iqsc coordinator nirf ex coordinator rasa university of mysore chairman bus lisc university of mysore his qualification includes master of library science phd and also post graduate diploma in computer application he has a very rich experience of more than 29 years his academic distinct distinctions includes bn raju memorial gold medal from university of mysore in 1986 state award from directorate of youth services and sports government of karnataka for securing first rank in blis examination from university of mysore in 1986 dr s r ranganathan memorial gold medal from university of mysore for securing first rank in the master of library science in 1987 the state award from the directorate of youth service and sports government of karnataka for securing first rank in mlisc in 1987 he is also awarded ugc research fellowship for conducting full time research in library and information science in 1988 he also is awarded a traveling fellowship by the australian research council and consortium of australian university under the project south asia renovating national collection in 1998 and also visited australia under this program for 218 days he is also recipient of emerald indian lis research fund award in 2011 highly commended research award for the project proposal in title use of social network site and its effect on students of engineering college in mysore city he is also recipient of library service award from government of karnataka in 2017 and he he is securing different administrative uh, uh, posts uh, having a vast experience he has also guided many phd and mphil students to his credit there are more than 133 uh, research papers published in international and national journals he is also associated with all ma many national and international bodies it is really an honor 
and privileged to receive you here sir in this virtual workshop and we express our sincere thanks for accepting our invitation and find some time to throw light on different aspects and update our knowledge on on cataloging skills sir thank you very much i request you now to please take over the session and guide all of us over to you sir uh thank you very much uh, dr tripathi for your uh, very prolonged uh, uh, introduction of mine and uh, thank you for uh, the good words that you have told about me in fact uh, your introduction has uh, raised the bar for my performance i hope i will uh, meet uh, your expectation and the expectations of uh, uh, the audience over here so give me a minute uh, so that i can share my uh, ppt yes sir it is visible now okay uh i hope it is visible now yes sir yes sir. okay fine the title has been given by dr tripathi is about uh, cataloging skills do we need to update our cataloging skills why this question when your eyebrows will uh, go up by looking at the topic and also the question first of all the many of my students ask me do we need to talk about cataloging anymore it is because uh, in the internet era in the era of digital libraries the retrieval is basically done by the machines and our role as cataloger is minimal such being the case why do we have to talk about cataloging first thing second thing is that even if there are uh, some skills that are available newly available definitely yes we have to update it what is there to discuss so these are probably some of the questions uh, that may arise in the minds of those who uh, who see my title let me try to answer that during the course of my presentation uh how i have planned my session is i want to introduce some of the jargons in the presentation which you may or may not know some of them and being a teacher i want to talk about something about uh, cataloging codes it is because these codes the history of cataloging codes have had impact on the future cataloging codes earlier also and now also so we have to have a good understanding of the the the, the, the milestones of the development of cataloging codes that's the reason why i would like to touch upon some of the cataloging codes which have influenced the present day cataloging codes and also we will be looking into the some of the metadata schemes uh, in the modern term or the cataloging codes of the present time and we will be looking into the trends in metadata so this is how i have planned planned myself hopefully i will be speaking for uh, 45 to 50 minutes and leaving the 10 15 minutes for uh, discussion 
the very first question that uh, one might uh, uh, really ask is when uh, do we need ACR2 anymore? As soon as we say cataloging, we remember of ACR2, the punctuation marks, the commas and full stops, semicolons, colons, etc. Do they have any relevance today also? Do we have to remember uh, the rules uh, that are there in ACR2? First thing is that. Secondly, new codes are emerging. Cataloging schemes are emerging like Mark 21, Dublin Core, RDA, BRA, METS, BibFrame, and so on and so forth. There are many, in fact. Which, are, which one of these have to be used for cataloging? Should I go for ACR2 or should I go for Dublin Core or my choice should be RDA and uh, the, the question uh, will be something like this and there is nothing wrong in it. We will try to answer this question also uh, by the end of uh, this particular uh, session. In fact, uh, the, the, uh, the latest cataloging code is RDA. As all of you know, it is resource description and access. And you have, when you look into the RDA code, you will see many of the unknown or new terminologies like work, expression, manifestation, item, entity, relationship, attributes, and so on and so forth. These were not there in AACR2 earlier. So these being the new jargons in our cataloging code, we need to know some basics of these things. So at least today, we will get ourselves aware about some of these terminologies used in RDA. In fact, uh, I will be uh, I will be uh, concentrating more on FRBR and RDA and the RDA structure or the table of contents in RDA looks something like this. It has got uh, some 10 sections and 37 chapters. And if you look into the section headings, it says recording attribute of manifestation and item. Please concentrate yourself on the terms which have been colored because these are the new jargons that we found in RDA, which is the next version of AACR2. After AACR2, AACR3 was uh, not published. The completely the structure and uh, the language of the cataloging code has been changed, have been changed. And this, uh, by just by looking at, uh, into the table of contents of RDA, we come to know the drastic difference between AACR2 and RDA. And RDA was published some 10 years back uh, by Library of Congress. In 2010, it was published. It is already uh, 10 years uh, since it has been published and we are we in India are yet to talk about RDA, implement RDA. The similar mistake we did when Mark was introduced. Mark was introduced, developed in the year 1965. Till late uh, 1990s, we did not talk about uh, Mark 21 at all. And we did not teach 
at the library schools mark 21 so we were just theoretically understanding uh, the concept of mark but never practiced mark 21 on uh, in, a, in a practical class but uh, same mistake or similar mistake should not be done with uh, RDA we have to start immediately our schools library schools have to start immediately uh, uh, teaching the RDA structure and uh, these these are uh, the remaining uh, <clears throat> chapters of uh, uh, RDA as I told you there are 37 chapters divided in uh, 10 different sections now let me go back to the uh, the history a little bit as I told you the hist historical development have had some impact on RDA also so that is the re reason why I am trying to uh, brush upon our memories uh, with uh, about the earlier ca cataloging codes uh, catalogs existed for a long period catalog as a product existed for a long period in fact uh, the sumerian tablet uh, uh, way back in uh, 2000 bc uh, discovered at uh, uh, nepo uh, recorded around uh, uh, 52 titles and uh, 24 are currently known literary works and uh, callimachus uh, uh, compiled penicus a list of works as early as to, to uh, 250 BC, the Greek scholars were the first to introduce the author title and subject entries in cataloging. And the Romans, they came up with the classified catalogs. They got influenced by the Greek scholars listings and they came out with uh, the classified uh, and bibliographic place uh, catalog codes. These codes are required for the sake of achieving uniformity and consistency. And they are the guiding principles for the catalog. Am I audible now? Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, I'm sorry for uh, it got disconnected somehow. Okay. And the cataloging codes, uh, <clears throat> they are the rules for describing the, uh, the, the scholarly works. And they also helps us in the choice of uh, headings and also give guidelines for giving the references and cross references so that we can identify the information that we want uh, in a library. There is no depth of cataloging codes. In fact, uh, um, I have listed uh, some, uh, somewhere around uh, 15 uh, uh, cataloging codes starting from British Museum code in uh, 1839 or the two centuries 15 codes have been developed out of which 11 codes have been developed in the previous century and that is the 20th century so these uh, details you have uh, studied in your BLAC or MLAC uh, classes the latest being uh, RDA, uh, about which we are going to discuss uh, in a short while from now. In fact, uh, if you look into the history of uh, 
cataloging uh, or catalogs you can divide the cataloging history into three major periods the early period and the age of inventory which is somewhere around uh, uh, 1200 ad to 1600 uh, uh, ad and age of finding so it is not uh, just a listing of the uh, works the the function of finding of materials was added to the catalogs by 17th century and it continued up to 19th century and the modern uh, <clears throat> catalogs from 19th century uh, onwards you can see that in the 17th century itself the concept of surname was used as an entry element and the catchword was used for anonymous words uh, as, uh, as the title of the anonymous words uh, works uh, if you move forward in the history of cataloging codes one need to say the contribution of uh, the british museum code which was published uh, way back in uh, 1839 by uh, developed basically by sir anthony panazzi he came out with uh, 91 rules and later it was reduced to 41 rules uh, 41 rules after some uh, criticism in fact uh, he was the person who advocated uh, for taking the title page of a book as and uh, as the source of cataloging and he also introduced a new concept called uh, giving a form heading like for academies periodicals etc later it was not it was rejected uh, but he introduced that one and he was the person who gave an idea of corporate authorship uh, this was some uh, uh, 120 years ago later in 1853 charles G c jewett of, of the smithsonian institute he revised uh, uh, the knowledge uh, that came from Panazzi's uh, cataloging rules and came out with uh, 39 rules. And he strongly promo uh, promoted alphabetical uh, cataloging. And he improvised the authorship uh, rules uh, that was advocated by Panazzi. And he also suggested for according the real name in, uh, for the pseudonymous uh, uh, works and he insisted that the first word from the anonymous work should be used as the, uh, uh, from the title as the uh, for anonymous works rather than the catchy word and he rejected the idea of form headings and the cutter code is quite important in fact in fact um, the, the the modern rda frbr etc have got uh, influenced by cutter's objectives which we will be uh, discussing later and he the rules uh, that he uh, developed was for set of libraries rather than single library the earlier rules they, they they aimed at developing uh, rules for a single library or a very few libraries but cutter aimed for a, a, a catalog code which is which comprehensively covers the set of libraries and uh, he came out with uh, the rules uh, related to authors titles subject forms etc etc and uh, naturally uh, he supported uh, uh, Jewett rather than Banasi uh, because Jewett rules were more comprehensive, more logical than Banasi's. Uh, 
uh, in fact uh, cutter's code uh, uh, is based on three principles the convenience and habit of the users specific and consistent subject entries and entry of books uh, by its author's name he was the person who added uh, uh, the rules for non book uh, material such as uh, uh, music manuscripts maps and so on and so forth uh, coming back to the uh, 20th century significant developments happened and the cataloging codes required drastic changes they re required drastic changes because of many factors the factors like growth of literature growth in number of libraries the multitudinal uh, uh, growth in the multitudinal form of uh, publications the influence of technology and the international collaborations in cataloging and the role of national libraries and library associations in creating the uh, huge and robust uh, uh, bibliographic databases and globalization and internationalization of cataloging standards all these factors influenced the development of the cataloging code in the 20th century as i said earlier almost 11 out of 15 uh, codes in english language were developed during the 20th century the first one of course being the anglo american uh, code which was published in year uh, 1908 as all of you know this code was developed in collaboration with two associ by of uh, two association library of uh, library association and uh, uh, ala and <clears throat> the main aim of uh, this joint venture was to come out uh, with rules for larger libraries of scholars uh, scholarly nature and uh by that time the printed uh, um, printing technology had developed quite well and uh, printed cards were available so this availability of the printed card uh, influenced the growth of the cataloging codes also uh, unfortunately uh, these two association they did not agree Uh, with all the rules that they themselves had developed, there were a few differences. So, two versions of uh, uh, Anglo-American code uh, was actually practiced. Uh, in fact, by 1941, uh, the experience of uh, the librarian showed that the A rules was to be Uh, uh was to be upgraded but unfortunately the world war uh, uh it was the time of the world war so they could not collaborate uh during that time so what happened was american library association it went ahead with uh, mod uh, with uh, development of cataloging code on its own and by that time the library of congress had come out with its own uh, uh, variations and its own uh, rule book for uh, cataloging so based on all these things the ala uh, rules in 1941 was uh, uh, was developed uh, by uh, was developed and uh, however it was criticized it was not accepted uh, and one of the librarians who uh, wrote a uh, very strong criticism about uh, ya rules was uh, andrew osborn and a new edition was published in the year 1949 which was colloquially called red book but library of congress continued to Uh, follow its own rules uh, 
slightly different than what was available uh, uh, or developed by ALA. Uh, so the rules that was followed by Library of Congress was called uh, uh, Green Book. And these two, ALA 1949 and Library of Congress uh, Code 1949, they form the basis for the first edition of ASER 2, ASER, sorry, ASER, ASER, which was published in the year 1967. And ALA uh, invited uh, uh, Lubetsky of the Library of Congress uh, in 1951 to prepare a critical study of uh, Yale in uh, 1949. Uh, Lubetsky prepared a, crit a critical analysis and he advocated towards uh, a less complex uh, principles, uh, but well-defined uh, principles. And um, Another catalog code vision committee was established by ALA and uh, in 1956 uh, Lubetsky was appointed as the editor of the revised code and by 1960 he produced uh, the book called Code of Cataloging Rules popularly known as CCR. In the meantime there was an effort by an Indian librarian uh, yes, sir, Ranganathan. He came out with uh, uh, a very popular catalog code called CCC, Classified Catalog Code in 1934. Uh, and uh, uh, though oh, he published uh, uh, five editions, he brought out five editions of the CCC, uh, the fifth edition became quite popular than its predecessors. And uh, as usual, uh, Ranganathan based his cataloging code on normative principles and developed lots of canons for uh, cataloging. And uh, he, his rules can be apl applicable was uh, uh, can be applicable for union catalogs of uh, books, um, periodicals of. Uh, national uh, periodicals and national bibliographies and indexing indexing and uh, abstracting periodicals and the first for the first time he introduced uh, uh, the concept of chain indexing for subject indexing which was used by british library as you know from 1950s to uh, 1948 i think uh, 1948 to 1972 and uh, he gave a lot of importance for uh, law of parsimony, uh, law of economy uh, in cataloging. Uh, the famous uh, uh, Paris uh, principle uh, was uh, published in the year 1961 and uh, at a conference called International Conference on Cataloging Principles and 53 countries attended the conference and uh, uh, Dr. Sarathan from India also attended uh, this conference and uh, put forth his uh, uh, ideas. And uh, the distinction between the book and the work of Qatar was revisited for the first time here in 1961. <clears throat> and by 1967, uh, again, uh, the UK and American collaboration started and uh, the, uh, this resulted in the publication of uh, AACR2 in 1967 and Lubetsky's uh, draft code of uh, 1960 was taken as the basis and improvised version of uh, the rules uh, was published and it was called Anglo-American Cataloging Rules AACR2. Uh, which is in vogue uh, uh, even now in many parts of the world. Uh, the salient uh, uh, features of uh, uh, AACR2, you may be knowing that uh, it catered both to general research libraries and public libraries, direct heading was uh, preferred 
the scope of uh, material included books book like and uh, non book materials and uh, kinds of uh, approaches uh, sufficient number of entries and references for documents catalog were uh, prescribed uh, in fact uh, uh, soon after acr2 was published there was an increased demand for standardizing the heading and entry practices in catalog so the standardization was uh, uh, the main issue by in discussion during the time and uh, with that uh, isbd was published in the year 1971 and this isbd is uh, responsible for uh, coming out with uh, the punctuations and other uh, uh, elements that we use today in cataloging in fact isbd has had uh, its impact uh, not only on future acr2 but also mark rda frbr and so on and so forth but one uh, one thing that we should know that a isbd is not a cataloging uh, rules it is a kind of a standard a format which we need to follow for developing uh, a cataloging code or uh, or a catalog uh, it doesn't include any prescription like uh, acr2 for heading or access point acr2 we can say uh, is an instance is an example of the implementation of isbd uh, so that's how we should perceive acr2 and uh, the structure of uh, isbd uh, uh, all of you know and th uh, this is still there this is uh, in mark also we follow this rda also uh, uh, follow the same structure suggested by uh, uh, isbd and, uh, and the nine different uh, sections uh, uh, that you can see over here a typical uh, uh, isbd record in paragraph format uh, looks something like this this was recorded on uh, 3 by 5 cards and uh, we were uh, taught about this uh, very meticulously in our library schools um, till recently and the same thing uh, isbd record in table forms uh, looks like this Uh, looks uh, something like this and uh, uh, probably this is the most suitable uh, uh, format uh, we need to teach uh, uh, the students from now onwards and uh, acr2 was uh, published in the year uh, 1978 uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, let me not uh, uh go into the details of acr2 because we have already uh, talked much about the uh, acr2 uh in fact ifla constituted a committee in, in late 1990s to look into the functional requirements for bibliographic records so ifla published in 19 98 a conceptual model for cataloging called frbr and this conceptual model is the basis for rda so if at all we want to learn about rda we have to have some understanding or a good understanding about frbr and uh, the literature on cataloging nowadays talk more about uh, frbr and it is also pronounced as farber farber by american uh, uh, librarians and uh, uh, this farber or frbr is based on a database design model called entity relationship model and the frbr was developed to satisfy 
the user tasks uh, with OPEX, a user, any user will have four distinctive tasks like find, identify, select, and obtain. These are the tasks that he does with the OPEC and the further addresses the problems and issues uh, related to these user tasks. In fact, FRBR, it bases its argument based on the cutters objects of library catalog. That's what I said earlier. The cutters objectives, the previous uh, course have had an impact over the present day uh, cataloging course. We have all understood uh, the cutters objectives, uh, three objectives. And unfortunately, what happened was the uh, cutters objectives, they talk about the collocation function. So, for example, uh, to find a book of which author is known, title is known, and subject is known. And the second one talks about the collocation function to show what the library has by given author, title, and given kind of literature. But many of our uh, library opacs, they do not uh, satisfy fully the collocation function. I'm going to demonstrate this uh, uh, bit later. And these objectives were not satisfied completely by the, uh, the modern day OPAC system. So okay, taking cognizance of this, if I came out with a bibliographic format, which needs to be followed in our cataloging records. So when we talk about uh, current cataloging standards, there are many, many metadata standards or cataloging standards. Uh, so the problem is uh, which one we have to choose. In fact, it depends upon uh, 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 it depends upon what kind of material we are cataloging and uh, how much information is available with us. Uh, uh, for cataloging and the community practice, the purpose of uh, the digital project, so on and uh, so forth. So mm, these metadata standards, uh, different metadata standards suit different uh, uh, situations, different cataloging course uh, suit different uh, situations. When I say metadata standards, I mean cataloging course also. <clears throat> In fact, uh, the cataloging uh, uh, standards can be divided broadly into four or five uh, categories. One is uh, content standard, second one is structural standard, value standard, format, and exchange standard. Actually, AACR2, RDA, they, they fall in the category of content standard. What do I mean by content standard means? It helps us to in the choice and rendering of the content uh, content of a book uh, in a catalog record. So uh, these are the value standards that we use. Uh, anyway, data structure standards. So let me go. OK, we will uh, focus more on um, um, RDA. And uh, now. We were talking about uh, some of the problems of modern day OPAC. Let me visit the uh, uh, Library of Congress and show, show how the cutter's objective was not uh, satisfied by the, uh, by the modern day uh, OPACs. Uh, let me try to please give me a minute. Okay, let me.
just a minute. Okay. So this is the uh, library catalog that we use. Let me check for, uh, let me go to the search options, advanced search and uh, search for a book. Uh, say for example, the book written by or can or I am. Okay, this is the uh, display the output that you get. So you can see here that uh, the ordering, there is no collocation of uh, documents. Say, for example, the Malgudi days, uh, where is Malgudi days? May, might have been public in different editions. So different editions of Malgudi days have been published. They got scattered. The, the second record is on Mal, Mal, this edition of Malgudi days and the, probably the 13th or the 14th record will be uh, again on Malgudi days with a different edition. But what user wants is all the editions of the Malgudi days, all the translations of the Malgudi days to come together. This function of allocation is not available in the library catalog OPEX of modern day. That is because we have not stored the data the way in which it, it is required for location. So that is why the F FRBR has suggested certain things which when we implement it will enable the catalog to be a more meaningful and more user friendly. In fact, uh, OCLC has come out with a pilot project called Fiction Finder, wherein they have implemented FRBR as a pilot uh, uh, project, and uh, we will see the difference uh, in the search results when we look into the, uh, the catalog. Same or K Nora and we will just check. Okay, yes, we have got it. You can see here. Again, we will concentrate our uh, focus our attention on Malgudi days. You can see that Malgudi days has come here. If you click on it, you will get all the 70 editions of Malgudi days together. All the 70 editions of Malgudi days in four languages held by uh, 1,365 uh, libraries together. And the details of the different uh, editions are available here. So this kind of uh, collocation was not possible earlier. Uh, so FRBRs identified this problem and uh, has uh, come out with uh, a new set of rules which we need to understand. Now, I have embedded uh, um, one of the uh, slide uh, slide shows uh, uh, given by uh, Barbara Tillett, a, a Library of Congress cataloger, well-known cataloger, 
uh, into my uh, presentation and uh, from now onwards most of the slides that i show you was prepared by uh, barbara tillet which i have embedded into my presentation uh, frbr etc we have already talked about it the most important thing about frbr is the terminologies that uh, uh, that has changed from uh, traditional cataloging codes so we will concentrate now on some of the terminologies uh, the basic terminologies that are used in uh, frbr and the same terminologies are used in uh, rda also so if you look into the rda these are the uh, terminologies that you uh, uh, you will find in fact uh, the three things that uh, uh, that you need to know is about entity relationship and attributes so let me give a simple example of an entity entity means something which exists when i say something which exists the existence may be physical exist existence may be virtual say for example a poem that exists it may not be in a written form but still that exists so we are talking about both virtual abstract and uh, physical entities so let us try to understand with a very simple example of what an entity is in a college environment a student is an entity a student is an entity and a college is also an an entity entity so this entity is uh, uh, when we say entity a group of similar entities is called entity set so this is another word that we need to know group of entity a similar entities are, uh, is called entity sets so the students all the students of the college forms one entity set all colleges they form another entity set so there exists a relationship between two entity sets or two entities so the relationship between one entity and another entity is shown by a diamond like this in a er diagram this diagram we need to understand if we want to understand rda so stu entity student is an entity college is an entity and study in student studies in a college is what the relationship is all about a student is described using attributes like student id student name student address so on and so forth so is the entity college college has a name college has an id and college has other aspects also so an entity is described by their attributes by their attributes all the attributes are the are used to describe an entity and the relationship between two entities is displayed something like this and even the relationship can have attributes entity can have an attribute this entity can also have an attribute and the relationship also can have an attribute so this is a very generic example of uh, entity uh, relationship uh, popularly called er diagram in database design as far as the bibliographic entity is concerned same thing it can be translated something like this this is an entity set of books this is an entity set of authors so there is a relationship between book and author and the relationship is authored book is authored by by an author or author or authors an author writes a book if you look from this angle the relationship changes to author writes a book or book is authored by an 
author and the relationship between the entity set book and entity set author is one to many which is given here one to n one to n means there exists a relationship uh, one to n relationship between book and author and the book is uh, described using the attributes such as title year isbn uh, publisher etc and also author and author is uh, described by name by, uh, and his uh, by uh, birth date and other things and similarly uh, the relationship can also have an entity I mean, uh, attributes so another model wherein we have also taken reader as an entity set so the entity sets are written in square boxes and relationship in diamond and the attributes are represented using uh, circles or ovals in an entity model in uh, er model entity relationship model so this concept of entity relationship attributes and entity set is required to understand uh, fr br <clears throat> There is an one entity and another entity is there. There exists a relationship and which we have already seen. For example, Shakespeare is an uh, entity who creates a work called Hamlet. So this concept of entity and relationship here you can see entity is Shakespeare. He belongs to an entity set called person hamlet is a work it belongs to an entity set called workshop oh, no, that works and the relationship between these two entity sets are called uh, created shakespeare created hamlet ha if you want to tell the relationship from hamlet side you should say hamlet was created by Shakespeare, something like this. Okay. In fact, in uh, FRBR and RDA, there are three, sorry, um, there are four entity sets which are called group one entities. Please try to understand this. In RDA and FRBR, there are four entity sets called work, expression, manifestation, and item. They are called group one entities. Group one entities have four entity sets called expression, work, expression, manifestation, and item they are popularly called uh, uh, remembered as vemi w e m i vemi so in the literature you can just uh, you may just see vemi vemi stands for work expression manifestation and item and what is a work work is an intellectual and artistic content a poem for example is a work of an author and which is expressed which is realized through some expression so the idea gets expressed is realized through an expression and the expression is embodied or stored in a manifestation in the form of a CD or a book or something like that and this manifestation is embodied 
is exemplified by an item by an item what do i mean by this in fact work and expressions are abstract entities as i told you entities could be physical as well as abstract so for example you want to write an uh, poem or a story the story in the most abstract form as an idea uh, as an idea exists in your mind which is called a work it will not have any uh, physical embodiment at all v the idea is expressed in some language or music or some audio form or from video form that is what the expression is even this may not have may or may not have the uh, physical form so the work and the expression will not have any physical form but the physical form is realized in the manifestation and item so in the cataloging what we are doing is we get a manifestation of a book or an item of a book and we look into the manifestation its manifestation and describe the item the attributes related to item the attributes related to manifestation the attributes related to expression the attributes related to work so in rda these things have been clearly separated what constitutes the attributes of work what constitutes the attributes of expression and so on and so forth so the description of these entities constitute the cataloging work as a whole and just to give an example this is not a, a comprehensive list of attributes work will have an attribute something like id title date etc expression will have an attribute like id form date language etc manifestation also will have more number of attributes and actually manifestation has more number of attributes than any other uh, uh, entities and item will have id Uh, provenance location etc etc so the, what what is the future cataloging looks like it looks like describing the work expression manifestation and items uh, the attributes of these uh, entities this is what the cataloging uh, will be so say for example if you have a leather bound autograph or autographed copy of a rare book collection then this is an example for the entity set it is not called entity set in rda but it is called just called entity entity item and a digitized version of uh, oxford uh, university press is an expression a manifestation and the french translation will be expression and the london symphony orchestra is also expression and hamlet is a work and this this requires little bit of uh, a practical training to understand uh, the things but this is how we have to identify the work expression manifestation and item of the uh, of the resource that we are cataloging in future and try to identify the attributes of all those things and then uh, enter into uh, the software of our choice like co or whatever and uh, if you look into the uh, family of works you can see uh, the le left hand side the red band uh, are all equivalent uh, versions of uh, uh, what you can call work and once you cross this dotted line then becomes it is a another work another work anyway i don't want to confuse you uh, so let me go further 
so as i said group one entities or work uh, expression manifestation and item in uh, rda this is how rda is structured and we have already seen the structure of uh, uh, rda already and group two entities or persons pcf uh, persons corporate body and family Uh, the same thing and group three entities or concepts objects event and place which talks about the subject cataloging subject cataloging and uh, item will also have uh, similar kind of uh, attributes and why do we need frbr or rda to improve the users uh, user experience in locating information it has already been tested and uh, uh, proved and to cut the cost of description to cut the cost because once you describe a work the future editions need not have to be uh, described for its work only the manifestation and item details need to be entered and uh, if you look into a catalog uh, uh, entry of uh, uh, library of congress you can identify the work and this is an entity set author entity set and this is the work work expression manifestation and item so this is how the future cataloging will be so this this is how the future cataloging has to be done and uh, as per the rules of uh, rendering is concerned there is no much difference uh, between the acr2 and the rda uh, in fact uh, rda has become more flexible than acr2 Uh, and uh, for example in rda we used to write uh, fourth edition uh, 4th dot uh, th ed dot but here you need not have to do uh, anything like that whatever format it is available uh, uh, is uh, appeared uh, uh, in whatever format uh, the fourth edition appears on the uh, book will have to be transcribed as the uh, as it is so, uh, so for example the fourth edition is written in the book as a f o u r t h edition in the cataloging record also rda suggests that it has to be rendered that way only like this a lot of uh, uh, changes are there between acr2 and uh, and uh, uh, rda in fact uh, what is next what after rda in fact a new uh, description standard is uh, emerging called dip frame and this dip frame intends to replace uh, mark mark was developed in 1965 and it has lived a long uh, in uh, uh, 2003 uh, or 4 there was a very very good article published by i don't remember the author's name uh, the title is mark should die so the the uh, so there are people who who advocates that we have to change uh, the mark mark has already overlived its uh, life and uh, there is a lot of uh, changes uh, that is required and uh, probably bib frame will take into consideration but fortunately for us the frame is in tune with uh, rda and F frbr so at least for the next 10 to 15 years uh, uh, rda will uh, survive uh, and uh, uh, bib frame uses uh, uh, the resource description framework uh, uh, model and uh, it uses the linked data principles and it is a data model for the uh, bibliographic description and uh, the latest version of uh, bibframe was uh, published in the year 2016 uh, 
uh, by Library of Congress. Please look into it. And uh, unlike Mark, uh, Biframe uh, will be useful within and outside the library community. So all these developments are happening. The FRBR has happened some 20 years ago. 20 years ago, the RDA has come and now Biframe is coming. So unless we and all these uh, things have already been implemented in Library of Congress to some extent and uh, the uh, world over these standards are being implemented and being used. So it is high time that uh, we learn these and it is not, uh, they're not very difficult to learn. Only thing is uh, we have to change our uh, understanding about uh, the cataloging. The ACR2 was uh, carrier based cataloging system but here it is, uh, RDA is more content based cataloging system that is the major difference between ACR2 and RDA and uh, we have to uh, we need not have to unlearn ACR2 because most of the rules they still are valid in ACR2 some of them have been changed and some of them have been added so we as uh, catalogers need to enter the cataloging details into our WAPAX based on RDA, RDA. So this is what uh, I just wanted to tell you uh, this evening. Uh, I know that uh, this is more uh, a theoretical lecture. Uh, in fact, uh, a pr practical demonstration would have been uh, uh, would have given you more uh, uh, insights into uh, what has been uh, discussed. But uh, I always believe that uh, the practice uh, should be based upon the sound theoretical knowledge. Then only we can enjoy uh, practice and also we can innovate uh, other things in practice. So with this, uh, I will end my presentation. Uh, so if there are any questions, I'm quite happy to take up. Thank you very much, sir, for making us aware about the different cataloging codes and also the practices being followed and about the future and uh, how we are supposed to update and upgrade our skills as far as uh, cataloging is concerned. Now I will, with your kind permission, I will request participants to please raise your question if you have any query uh, related to the talk. And also if you have any other question related to cataloging, so sir will be answering. Uh, sir, uh, one question is from Mr. Uh, Binu K. John. Uh, his request is to please focus on uh, elaborate Z39.50 protocol also. Would you like to address this? <laughs> so it doesn't uh, actually relate it directly to the talk today. Z39.50 yes. uh, is a uh, exchange format, exchange uh, format for remotely accessing uh, the data from a remote and database. So that much I can say at this point in time. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, viewers, please raise your question in the chat box if you have any query or question. So uh, we will, um, that question will be displayed on the screen and sir will be uh, taking up those questions. Uh, sir, I can see so many good comments about your session. Um, most informative and good session. I remember your Master of Library Science classes, sir. Thank you very much for informative session. So your talk has really been very uh, good, sir. It has enriched our knowledge and also it has given the uh, path to move ahead with some uh, so skill we need to uh, learn to make our catalog most relevant uh, as far as users are concerned because whatever we update in our system it is uh, directly going to be viewed by uh, end users 
and uh, as a library professional and based on my experience i really believe that if we are failing in updating our catalog so uh, we cannot say how we are true librarian so to some extent we have to be very very prompt very very accurate in updating our catalog because catalog is a mirror of uh, whatever we do in library and uh, they are supposed to get exact information uh, so that not uh, if we think as a user so we are also supposed we we also suppose that we get information so similarly all the users they expect the information to get uh, in the same way in between i am getting the question sir suggest some resources uh, from ms deep mala nigam suggest some resources on rd and frbr with example uh, i can send you across the resources uh, okay sir will be sending the detail i'll forward to all the participants uh, sir one more question sir there is no more question i think uh, the talk has really is this their knowledge so in between if i get any questions so i'll be forwarding to you to me and whenever you are uh, free so it is humble request to please uh, reply on those queries so thank you very much sir for accepting the invitation and also uh, giving a very useful and fruitful uh, talk and uh, uh, throwing lights on different aspects of cataloging i will uh, request all the participants that uh, please uh, we uh, um, again you see the video and also just see that what are the things uh, you need to upgrade and update it because it is highly required uh, in future so uh, one question uh, is from mr chetan hegde uh, with so many cataloging code or format what is the way forward especially in indian libraries concept okay it's a good question um, yes there are many cataloging standards available which one we want to use depends upon uh, what we are cataloging for digital uh, objects you have to choose a appropriate uh, uh, cataloging code for uh, uh, say Uh, the bibliography i mean uh, the regular uh, uh, books serials and other kinds of things you have to uh, choose rda and other things so it depends upon uh, the purpose of your cataloging the objects that you are cataloging and uh, so on and so forth if you are uh, if you are cataloging the website probably uh, dublin core may be uh, most suitable and uh, things like that educational resources if you are cataloging tei may be uh, suitable visual uh, uh, artifacts if you are cataloging there is a, a standard called vra so for a general and uh, university libraries rda can be uh, implemented thank you sir thank you very much uh, i cannot see any question more so with your kind permission uh, would you like uh, me to will proceed for closing the session sir on behalf of all the participants and my own behalf once again sincere thanks to you sir for uh, being with us today and uh, updating our knowledge on cataloging skills i am also thankful to all the participants for joining us today and uh, being interactive and uh, one request i will just uh, to all the participants that in every session we whenever the speakers they uh, just speak on different aspects so please uh, be interactive so that we can uh, get more uh, insight get we can get more idea more knowledge and uh, it will be beneficial for everyone so thank you sir thank you very much i request all of you to please stay uh, safe and happy sir thank you once again and uh, we'll sir definitely get your blessing some other time too thank you sir thank you very much wish you all a very happy and good day ahead with these we'll close the session now